Hi, I'm Dr Emma Wells, and join me as I explore this fantastic historical trail, St Cuthbert's Way. Located on the banks of the River Tweed, here within the grounds of Benrig Cemetery, are the ruins of Old St Boswells. The original village of St Boswells stood over at Benrig, on the area between the current riverbank and higher ground. As the site was prone to flooding, the villagers eventually moved to higher ground at Lessudun, the place of Aden, and the present site of the village. The Church of St Mary here was established in the 12th century during the reign of David I. Over time, the worshippers moved to the Old Kirk, erected at Ben Rig. The Old Kirk here was built in 1652 to replace the church at Lesserdon, which was subsequently demolished in the mid-20th century. To the east of these ruins also stood the Chapel of St. Boisel, the 7th century prior of Melrose and Cuthbert's mentor. St Boisel is known to have made use of local springs and wells for healing power and no doubt medieval pilgrims followed in his footsteps. The most interesting of these are the Crystal Well and Mule Gang, which are listed structures adjacent to the way. They represent the mid-18th century landscape design so prevalent across Britain, where utilitarian structures were combined to create more picturesque and natural vistas. The current structure here at the Crystal Well is a later folly, a grotto in fact, built in the mid-19th century by the Elliots of Benrig House. Above is another interesting structure. The height of modern technology at its time, the mule gun comprises a rusticated stone arch set in the bank with a hydraulic ram and circular gin house. This allowed for a donkey to walk in a circular motion to pump water up to the house from the well below. There was quite clear guidelines within Anglo-Saxon England of how you developed a cult of saints. Um, saints were big business. They meant masses of income, tourism, um, investment, and relics were changing hands as, as you know, to the equivalent of fine artworks. They were big, big business. But um, when it came to Anglo-Saxon cults of saints, you've got these different groups, particularly in the north of England, who are all uh, slightly different. They're all offering alternative setups. Mm -hmm. So over at Jarrow and Monk Wormuth, you've got um, a hotbed of scholarship, of, of, scri of scriptorial activity, more Roman than Rome with its glass windows and its stone buildings and its massive Bibles. Over at Hexham and Ripon, You've got Wilfred, and he is modelling himself much more on the all-powerful bishop um, monks of Gaul. So he has empurpled manuscripts, he has uh, yeah, caskets that replicate uh, ivory caskets. That's his setup. Lindisfarne develops its own brand, its own unique uh, approach to the cult of Cuthbert, mm -hmm. which is deliberately blending Celtic art, Celtic ideas with Roman influences. Um, very self-consciously. So as, the, as an historian, I mean, I, look, I can look at it and say, right, those swirls and spirals are Celtic. That Germanic pattern work there is Anglo-Saxon. That's Roman. But they are doing that deliberately. It's like graphic design. You know, they're, they're cultivating it to show that the saint himself, but also the community, is bringing all these ideas together. And join me next week 
for more of my travels along St. Cuthbert's Way.